Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We are going to talk about, or better to say witness, a hands-on experience of sugar no-code configuration approach. And after the main part, it will be a Q&A section. So please feel free to ask questions in GoToWebinar questions panel. My name is Anastasia, and I am a CRM consultant for Integros. Today, I'm taking care of webinar moderation and addressing any questions you might have. Without any further delay, let me introduce today's speaker, Daniel, who already has a no-code approach experience and is willing to share it today. Hi, Daniel, and please catch the screen. Okay, brilliant. So, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, today, I've been asked to come and talk to you about the first major process that we built in Sugar CRM to improve one of our waste service processes. Um, we've since done a, quite a few more, but in this demo I want to focus on our bulky large item waste collection, which as a district council is one of the services that we offer. But first I just wanted to quickly give you some context around the challenges we had and why we were looking at changing it. So we started off with some pretty big challenges. Um, we had decided as an organisation to have a corporate CRM system and try to utilise its flexibility as much as possible as part of a programme of redesigning our services. Although there are a lot of out-of-the-box functions in Sugar, we really required some more custom processes that we couldn't achieve with the Sugar BPM workflow tool alone. Um, it's also worth pointing out that we had a very limited budget um, and we had no in-house PHP coding expert but we still wanted to achieve um, the big ambitions that we had around more efficient services, both for us and our customers. So what I want to do now is to show you um, what the process looked like. Um, so our bulky waste collections, we had a web form that we already had that collected our customers' data. So we did have an online presence. That was then put into, that was integrated into a, a back office system. Our admin team then had to run reports, run daily reports, um, run the job sheets for the crews to be able to go out and do to do their pickups. They then had to print them job sheets um, and also for some of the harder to find properties um, that had requested the service. And um, they also had to go onto a mapping system, find the property and print off the map so that the, the waste operatives also had directions. The crew then went out to complete the collection. They then had to update the paper sheet that they'd been given um, by the admin team. They then had to take that back to the back office where the admin team then had to look through the sheets and update the original case on the back office system with whether, the, whether it had been completed, whether there were any issues. And then they had to shred the sheets. So as you can see, it was it's not completely clear by that, but it was quite admin heavy, running all of the reports, running all of the job sheets, printing them all off and then updating them all again at the end of the day. It was taking quite a lot of time and resource to have to deal with that. So like I said, we wanted to improve this process um, and that we knew we couldn't make them improvements with the BPM tool alone and we had no PHP developer. However, fortunately for us, we stumbled across an Integros webinar, very similar to this one, and, um, and also the Logic Builder tool. So what I'd like to show you now is how we use the Logic Builder tool to create the flowcharts that we needed to develop Sugar CRM. So we did, we did this, we recreated, we developed this process, sorry, by creating four flowcharts with Logic Builder. Um, we, we did it that way because it made it into more manageable size chunks and it was it enabled us to make amendments quicker and easier by splitting the process into four areas. So the first one is when we still have that web form, we still have the online presence. When the form comes in, it triggers this flowchart. Um, and basically what, it, what the form does is it creates a JSON pro payload that when it goes into Sugar triggers this map and this flowchart in Logic Builder was then around taking that data, cleaning it up into something that we could then understand um, and that Sugar could understand and registering them details uh, into our Sugar CRM. What it then done 
is checked whether there was a case with that reference already that it needed to link to. Um, and it uses all of the information that was captured by the form. Now, for anyone that's not seen Logic Build at all, I feel like there's a couple of things I need to point out. So firstly, um, it looks quite daunting when you see all of these lines and all of the operators and boxes. Um, but there's two points I'd like to make about that. Firstly, once you've done a couple of flow charts, it really doesn't seem as complicated at all. And secondly, it is nowhere near as daunting as trying to learn PHP. So um, for us, we soon quickly got, got our heads around all of the different elements of Logic Builder. Um, so back to the map, it, it checked whether there was a case in our Sugar CRM. And if there's not, what it would basically do is create that case. And it creates the case using all of that information that I just showed you on the form. And down here, is all of the case details that we've taken. All these lines are bringing all of them, the, the fields from the form and importing it into the case. So I'm sorry about all of the scrolling, but it's quite a big map. Um, the other thing that we added do is we have an addresses module in our um, CRM system. Um, and the reason that's important is because we use a, we have a local property database. So all of our properties are loaded in with that and what we did we have that in our sugar crm and this flow chart it creates the case but it also uses the address of the customer that's requested the service and um, to find and link that to that address and the reason that's important is because on our database we have a unique property reference number we have eastings and northings mapping coordinates and we can reuse that um, so in this flow chart we also took the data but also looked in our mapping module and linked it to any address that we already had in the in the module. So once the module is there, uh, once the case is then created, it creates, um, it links it to the form data, and then basically triggers off the next flow chart. So this was that. This is stage one of our process and the first flow chart that it does. So in summary of this one, excuse me. In in summary of this one. Um, it's taken the details of the web form, it's created a case in Sugar, and it's linked to the correct address from the addresses module that we have in Sugar. The next flowchart then gets started, which is validate case. So I shall just bring this one up. So the last flowchart triggers this one. And then we we're able to then do what we then want to do with the case. So this one was about validating some of the details and taking it a little bit step further. So it brings all of the case details in. We then store some of that information to reuse later. But the main thing that we're doing here is we're taking out some of that address data. So we've got the Eastings and Northings. Now I will come back to why we did that. Um, so we take that information out of the case first. And then what we do is We've used this flow chart to then look to see what email was provided as a part of the, the customer that was requesting the service. We then to see whether or not there was an account already in our sugar of that email address. We then check to see whether or not there's a contact already in CRM with that email address. If there isn't, it creates one and that's what all of this is doing It's basically just creating the customer it's creating the account and if there is one already what it does is it just links that new case to the customer so it then links it to it so we then got this a really good view of our contact and our addresses and any cases that are linked to that person and all this is happening um aut automatically without us having to do anything so once it's got that and it, it's read it's linked it to the case or created it it then just does a check to make sure that there is a, a booking slot for the service that the customers requested and then once it's done that it takes them eastings and northings from the map that i mentioned earlier and what we do is we in logic builder we can even create external calls um, and what this is doing is it's preparing the rest api it makes an external call to be able to turn the eastings and northings into longitude and latitude coordinates so that we can create a Google URL to be able to give directions to the job. Now, the reason that that was so important is because what we've done is we've actually introduced 
mobile devices to this process so that the crew, instead of using paper, will be able to use the Sugar CRM mobile app to be able to go and do the pickups that they needed to um, as part of the bulky waste process. And that map location just means that they have a link on the, the device now that they can click on that and get directions directly to the job. Um, so all this is, is, is being managed by this flowchart. What it then finally does is creates the work slip for the crew. So we've got the case, it then creates a work slip for the crew using the information that we've gathered as part of the case. And then it sends a notification to the customer to say, to acknowledge their request, um, and, and to tell them that we'll be in contact again soon, nearer their booking date. And that's what, what this flowchart flow chart does. So in summary of this flowchart, it's taken the received case, it's validated some of the information, it's created a URL for Google Maps, it's linked to or created a customer account and contact, it's sent an acknowledgement notification to the customer, and we've also created a job work slip for the waste operative to be able to make the collection. So what I'm gonna do now is just quickly show you what that looks like in Sugar before we move on to the next two, two flow charts. So in Sugar, this has now created the case. Now this is the, a bulky waste collection, but like I said, we have actually added quite a few more processes since using the same flow charts. That's one of the the great things about Logic Builder, we were able to add without having to recreate their maps. We've just been able to reuse them and add more services. So we've got a status of received, it's linked to a contact, it's linked to an address, it's got details of the summary, um, a, a summary of what the services that we're doing, it's got contact details in there, and then attached to the case, it's got the auto-created work slip that the crew are gonna be using um, to be able to go and fulfill the service. So in the work slip there, we've just got the information that's needed for them to be able to, to go and do that job. So what we didn't want to do is create a, a mob in the mobile app where all of the jobs for all of the requests were all in there for, for, the, for the crew, because obviously we only wanted the jobs to be shown for the ones that were were due that day because otherwise there'd be lots that were scheduled for in one month's time in one week's time and we only wanted to show the what what was happening on that day so if i now go back to the logic builder map that then takes us to the next one which is schedule work slips so the next part of the process was basically to say well we don't just want all of the jobs showing to the crew on that mobile device so what we did was we created a bpm that runs every day in sugar to trigger this map and what this map does is it basically it looks for any work slips that have been planned for the next day so this runs on on an evening and it looks for any any that have been planned for the next day it then updates the case with a status of scheduled and then um, updates the work slip with a status of scheduled and then prepares a notification to the customer so that they then get a notification to say, don't forget we're coming tomorrow. So one of the issues that we did have as part of the old process was that sometimes the customer would forget and have to call. Sometimes they wouldn't have the items out ready for collection. So what this has done is mitigated that risk by, by sending a reminder that we, would, we never had in place before to help reduce some of their missed collections. So that's what that done. Um, that's what that map's done. So in the summary of this one, it's basically, it's updating the case, it's sending a reminder, and it's making sure that by using them, by updating the status, that the only jobs that the, the operative sees when he comes in in the morning are the ones that are scheduled for that day. So it's a really good way of being able to manage the, 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 the list of jobs that on, on through the Sugar app. So at this point, this is where the, the crew would then go out. Um, what I'd like to just show, um, sorry, just bear with me two seconds. So yeah, what we then do is move on to the final part of the process, which is once the crew's actually gone out to actually complete the service. So what this map's basically doing is saying, once the work slip has been updated by, via the mobile device by the crew, 
it then it's then setting some information for us to use. A lot of that is just is just what we've put in to, to save some data that we in case we want to reuse it somewhere else. It then finds the case that that's related to. And then once it's found the case, it then does a check. So it closes the work slip because we have been to the job and then it then looks and says, has the job job been fulfilled as expected, i.e. we picked up the, 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 the bulky waste. If it has, we, we, we mark the case as completed. If it, there was issues and there was a reason why we couldn't fulfill the service, what it actually does is it marks the, the case as having issues. It then updates the status to be paused because we're probably going to need to go back. And then what it does is prepares an email that goes out to the customer to say, we're really sorry, we've been unable to do it. And then the reasons why. It also gives us an opportunity as part of their the waste operatives process is they also upload photos. So we've also got evidence in the back office CRM system that's attached to that work slip. If it does work as expected, this is where it updates the schedule as it updates the sorry the case as completed and basically does exactly the same thing just over here where it then prepares an email um, and a notification. It could be email, SMS, and it goes out to the customer to say um, we've completed it, um, and then that closes off the process. So what this is doing is why this one's really important is because. By the crews using the mobile device and and this map getting triggered and updating the case and updating the work slip, we're actually now getting real time data into the frontline office. It means our customer service operatives have an idea where um, whether something's been completed or not. The waste managers have got a dashboard now in Sugar that's showing the work slips that are still scheduled, the ones that have been completed, all of which before. No one knew where anything was until obviously the paper sheets come back in at the end of the day. So, um, so this this really helped us move us to a very different um, a very different environment on what we were operating from. So, what I want to do now is sort of show you what that meant in terms of how that now looks for the bulky waste process. So, this is where it was before. How it runs now is we have the web form still. It collects all of the data, it does all of the booking. That's then fed into Sugar, where Logic Builder picks that data up and it creates that case and it sends a notification to the customer. CRM now schedules the job um, for the crew for the next day. There's an auto reminder that goes out, as I mentioned, to remind the customers that we're, we're coming. They then go out and complete their collection. They update the work slip via the Sugar app, which then automatically updates the work slip and the case um, and provides that real, real time data into the back office. And then the auto completion notification then goes out to the customer, either informing them that we've done what we said we'd do or that we've been unable, unable to and the reasons why. So that's very different um, from what it was before. And we've achieved all of that by using them for Logic Builder Maps. So what are the real benefits that we've had out of using that and creating that? Well, as you could see from that new process, there are now no more admin input at all. This service is now fully automated. And so are the six or seven others that we've used that work, that same work, that same Logic Builder workflow we've put in. We have managed to completely automate automate six or seven services and take out any admin at all. We've been able to introduce mobile device through the use of the Sugar app, giving us then real time data updates. Um, and that's given us improved data and reports as a result. But there are really mainly three points that I would like to highlight that this is this has done for us as an organization. So the first one is is given our customers a more efficient service. Um, a really huge one is we've been able to do all of this without any coding whatsoever. We've not had to bring in any extra resource. We've not had to pay for a coding expert to come in and do this. Um, and we've been able to do it through adding to the current out of the box sugar functionality. Um, and it's given us a completely different level. And what that means is we now have, the third point is that we now have increased confidence in delivering the future requirements that we know we've got as part of our organizational program of improvements for all of our services. Um, 
the logic builder tool means that we don't have to rely on one having coding experts but two relying on just the, the out-of-box functionality which although is great we can take it to that next level um, and that's what hopefully I've been able to show, albeit a very quick run through. Um, I didn't want to go through every little box of the Logic Builder tool because that would, would have took quite a while. Um, but I hope you found that really useful and, and you can sort of see the benefits out of, an, of what Logic Builder can do for you as an organization and how it can enhance your Sugar CRM experience. So I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching. And I'm now going to pass you back to Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was quite an impressive process implemented and automated. And I believe even more to go. I can only add that uh, we at Tegros created Logic Builder for everyone who faces challenges on how to quickly configure Sugar if you are not a PHP developer. And you can try it yourself. Just start a 30-day trial period right now by signing it at logicbuilder.integrocrm.com. And if you are wondering what else can be addressed with a no-code approach, please visit our YouTube channel where we already showed solutions for more than 15 challenges, or do not hesitate to contact us directly. Now, let me please see whether there are any questions. Uh, so, if you have any, you can type them right now or in questions section of go to webinar panel or into chat section. I can see both. Mm. Uh, or if you have any questions, of course, please do not hesitate to contact us directly via email or via site integrasyram.com. We will be more than happy to help with any questions you might have. Uh, well, looks that there are no questions for now so thank you for joining us today thank you for watching have a great day and bye bye